Hey everybody, it's Keith and Barry here. Uh, Keith again with Tilt Property Group and Barry McGuire with Richie Mill Law Office. And uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of different topics and um, uh, you know, we've been spending some time talking about renovations. And so I wanna touch on something as a, as a realtor that you know, you can imagine, I've seen all kinds of different rentals and some of them not that good and some of them stunning. And the big difference for me as a, as a realtor when I'm, when I'm bringing my buyers through them is, is gonna be the, you know, more towards the side of the valuation of the property uh, when it comes time for an appraisal and so on that that do-it-yourself or that do-it-yourself reno uh, often will appraise or be valued much less than the professional one. Um, what I wanna know from you is on the legal side, what can we watch out for when with those two? Because they're so different. Like, what 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 do you look at as on the legal side for that? Well, interestingly enough, the whether it's a do-it-yourself or whether it's a professional renovation, you know, there's a couple of things that you you, you want to know about and you want to look at on the legal yeah. side. For sure, if the renovation is one of those ones, do-it-yourself or professional, that requires permits. Yep. Then it's a big one. you need to know that the permits have A, been issued, so that's usually a development permit and a building permit, yep. and then B, do it yourself or professional, that in the end, an inspector has looked at those renovations and has uh, passed them without deficiency, and you see the occupancy certificate usually on the electrical box. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do a search down at the, at the municipality. Just uh, to see what's been registered, is that right? Like, well, to see that, you know, to know that the permits have been issued, um, that's that's in the file that relates to the property yeah. at the municipality. We're in Edmonton, so that would be the city of Edmonton. Yeah. You need the seller's permission to search his file, but that's just a one-page document. Yeah. It says, I, seller, hereby authorize. You've seen those. Yeah. And then you, you go down and you look at the city file, and you're looking for development permit, building permit, and a, a note or a record that the inspector has been called and that he's been to the property and that he's made his comments and the comment you want is approved, no deficiencies. Right. And that will result in the sticker on the electrical box. So do it yourself or professional uh, on the legal side, that's what you look for. But really, I think the, uh, an ultra important part of it when you're distinguishing between do it yourself or professional is the quality of the renovation. Yeah. So okay. you said that that the value the appraisers look at do it yourself versus professional, and the professional one is valued higher. But yep. you know another key part of that, if it's especially if it's do it yourself, is what did they really do for the well, renovation? How did that do it yourself guy do it? Yeah, and that's my question because I mean, my experience has been that when I look at a professional renovation. All the permits have been pulled. Everything's yeah. been done properly sure. because the professional knows that that's going to come up. And what I find with the do-it-yourselfers is that it's kind of like, okay, do you have permits for the basement? And the answer is like, you know, well. But even uh, if the answer is yes, let's say he's a reasonably diligent do-it-yourselfer. Yeah. So he knows he has to get permits. So he actually goes and gets homeowner permits, which you can do for a lot yeah. of these things. But does he know what the heck he's doing? Oh you yeah, know? of course. Because for me, start? the for me, the part that scares me. I mean, I, I can look around a house and see if the laminate hasn't been done properly, if the cuts are weird, or the trim hasn't been done right. But I'm talking about stuff I don't know anything about, yeah. such as the electrical, the plumbing, and so on. Uh, knowing that it's been done right, and, and permits and inspections are kind of what you know, so, gets so, us so through that. So those ultimately get us through that. But yeah. I think this is where the home inspector is uh, is very yeah, important. He's vital. Yeah. Very, uh, I mean, vital all the time, but on a do-it-yourself renovation, you really need to have a competent, licensed home inspector to come through and, you know, tell him that this is a do-it-yourself reno, and he'll focus in on various places where he knows yeah, people will be. Yeah, he might just take be, a few extra steps, won't he? You know, people yeah. don't know. If it's not your job, and you're, and you're being your own plumber, you're being your own electrician, you're being your own heating guy, yeah. I mean, Great if they know and they can do, but is that likely? No. Yeah. So home inspection is very important on the do-it-yourself uh, versus professional side of things. Well, and just like we said in the previous episode, if you, uh, if if the buyer does not do that due diligence when they're purchasing a renovated property, um, if they don't do that due diligence, then when they go to sell, uh, that's where problems can really come up. Yeah, they'll they'll face the problems uh, when they sell as if they renovated it. At, yeah, yes, they sort of become yeah. that guy. Yeah, and. If, if it's a do-it-yourselfer, that renovation won't last. So that's a practical thing. Permits are not 
the do-it-yourself guys uh, renovation has a tendency not to last as long as the professional because really they don't know everything about it yeah. they're just guys trying to do it and they don't really know so inspections and permits again are ultra important huge Barry, thank you for this. That was a All really right. good one. Um, Thanks, Keith. I hope this information is helpful. Have a good day.